In this video, I'm going to show you how to create interactive components with Figma. Let's get started. So to begin, I'm opening up a Figma project that I'm currently working on. I'm currently working on the settings page for an iOS application. So I have a header element that includes the title of settings, and then I have different values that the user can turn on and off within the application. And so in order to create a realistic prototype for this application, I would need to create several states for the setting page. So I can't only include this one settings page on the top because there are various different states that the user can land on depending on which values they turn on and off in these toggles. So I had to design all of these pages to account for the different states that the user can land on if I wanted to test this page. But in addition to that, I also had to link them all up using the prototype tab. So over here in the top right corner, I then had to link up every single element so that way it logically made sense during user testing. So I linked all these elements up. So now if I play the prototype, we can actually see the interaction and it does mimic what the user would expect on this page. However, going back to the design, this is a lot of work for only one page. I had to create eight frames to represent one interaction on the page. And so you can probably imagine that for larger products, the number of frames would only increase exponentially. And so Figma recently released their interactive components feature, which is still in beta. So currently, as I'm recording this, you have to join their beta program in order to get access to this feature. So I'll leave the details for the beta program in the description below. So getting started with interactive components, first, I'm going to go into the design tab, which is at the top right. And I essentially want to streamline this process. So that way I don't have to create eight frames to show this interaction. I can just have one frame and show all the interactions because the interactions won't be on the actual page level, but they'll be within the actual component. If you're fairly new to Figma components, I have a specific tutorial that goes over them. So I'll link that video in the description below. So at the moment, if we zoom into the design a bit more, we can see the page layout. So I have these labels on the left hand side that represent different items. And then on the right side, I have this actual switch. So initially all of the switches are off and this is actually a component that I already created. So over here to the side, I already created a state for the switch being off and I created another state for the switch being on. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually grab these two components and over here on the right side, I have an option to combine them as variants. And variants means that each one of these represents a different state of that component which is true in this case, because in one state, the switch is off and in another state, the switch is on. So I'm going to click combine as variants. Once I do, we can see that this different element appears on the page. And these two elements seem to be grouped together in this purple box. And it indicates that there are two variants, meaning that there are two different states for the switch to be in. So now if I select one of these components in the property panel on the side, I can see that property one for this element is set to off and property one of the other element is set to on since that represents the on state. Now property one isn't very descriptive of the text. So instead I'm going to replace this and I'm going to say state. And for the initial one, I'm going to set the state equal to false because it's the off state. And for the second one, I'm going to set the state equal to true because it's on the on state. And next, I want to indicate that there is a relationship between this state and this state. So when the user taps on this state, I want it to go to this state. And when the user taps on this one, I want it to go back to the original state. So here I'm going to select this variant and back up here in the prototype tab, I'm going to add an interaction and I want to keep it on a tap interaction and I want to change it to the other variant state. So I'm going to say change to, and then I'm going to change the state to on, meaning that when someone taps on this, it should automatically bring them to the state. However, I don't want this animation to be instant. Instead, I want it to smart animate between states. 
Now, if you're fairly new to Smart Animate, I have several tutorials on my channel that go over this specific feature. So I'll link those videos in the description below as well. But essentially, it will take the characteristics of the first element, take the characteristics of the second element, and using the ease function and the timing, it will transition from one state to the other seamlessly. So now that we have this state defined, I want to also define the opposite state. So I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to add an interaction, that's a tap interaction, and I'm going to change it to the off state with the same smart animate interaction. So now we can see these interaction lines appear, which represent if someone taps on the switch, it will bring them to this state. And when they tap on this switch, it will bring them back to the previous state. Great, so now that we have our variance defined, let's actually use it in an application design. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to make a duplicate of this original settings page. So I'm just going to say Command C and then Command V to paste it. And I'm also going to remove these initial interactions that I set up. And so with this one, I only have one page that has these components within it. So when I go back to my design tab and I actually select a switch, I can see over here in the right side panel, the switch component and I can see the state. So right now the state is off and I can also turn it on and that will automatically change the variant in the design. But for right now, I'm going to leave it as off because this is the initial state for the application. To reduce confusion around this design versus the previous design that I already created, in this header area, I'm just going to write settings with variants. So with this one, I'm going to select it now again, remember, I didn't include any other linking to these other pages. It's just the interactive components within this page. So now the application refreshes, and now when I select on a switch, it automatically transitions from the off state to the on state without having to create extra frames and pages. One thing to note is that this animation is rather slow. I'm just going to increase the speed of the interaction. So here I'm going to go to my prototype tab under smart animate. I'm just going to increase the speed to 200 milliseconds. And then I'm going to refresh the prototype. And initially it will land the user on the default state, which is that all the elements are turned off. And so when I tap on one now, it moves much faster. Using interactive components can definitely increase your prototyping speed because instead of having to create so many different frames just to show small micro interactions on the page, instead, I can put all of the interactions within the actual component level and then just reference those components on the actual page level. So that way I can reserve page level interactions for larger elements like transitioning from one page to another versus these small tiny interactions on the frame level. So there you go. That's how I use interactive components using Figma. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.